Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Everybody for uh, tuning in to these daily updates. I, I want to introduce, I'm sure you know, uh, Jenny Harris, Deputy uh, Chief Medical Officer of uh, England, and uh, you know, uh, Sir Patrick Balance, uh, Chief Scientific Advisor. Um, I want to tell you where we got to in our uh, national fight back against Corona, the coronavirus. Today, the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies met to discuss the latest evidence on the spread of the virus and the effects of the measures we have already taken uh, to slow its spread. And uh, Patrick is going to update us in a second about that. I want to repeat that everyone, everyone, must follow the advice to protect themselves and their families, but also, more importantly, to protect the wider public. So stay at home for seven days if you think uh, you have the symptoms, but the two key symptoms are uh, high temperature, uh, a continuous new cough, whole household to stay at home for 14 days if one member of that household thinks uh, he, she has uh, the symptoms, avoid all unnecessary gatherings, pubs, clubs, bars, restaurants, theatres and so on, work from home if you can, uh, wash your hands and uh, we've all already announced in the uh, last few days, we will massively scale up our testing capacity in the weeks ahead so that it keeps 25,000 tests a day. Huge public information campaign is being rolled out so people uh, get all the information they need, we need to protect ourselves and others. Uh, we're asking retired healthcare professionals to come back and help us cope, help, help the NHS to cope with this unprecedented challenge. And we will continue, as we have from the beginning, to do the right thing at the right time and to follow the best scientific advice. And we come today to the key issue of schools, uh, where we've been consistently advised that there is an important trade-off. And so far, the judgment of our advisors has been that closing schools is actually of limited value in slowing the spread of the epidemic. And that's partly because, counterintuitively, schools are actually very safe environments and uh, in this disease, in this epidemic, children and young people are much less vulnerable. And hitherto, uh, the advice has been that we should keep schools open if possible in order to reduce pressure on the NHS and, uh, and on all other public services. But I think you'll, you'll agree that I've always been very clear that this is a balanced judgment and one that we've kept under constant review. So looking at the curve of the disease, looking at where we are now, we think now that we must apply downward pressure, further downward pressure on that upward curve by closing the schools. So uh, I can announce today, and uh, Gavin Williamson is making a, a, a statement now in the, in the House of Commons, that after schools shut their gates from Friday afternoon, they will remain closed for most pupils, for the vast majority of pupils, until further notice. And I'll come to, uh, I'll explain what I mean by the vast majority of pupils. The objective is to slow the spread of the virus, and as I say, we judge that this is the right moment to do that. But of course, as I've always said, we also need to keep the NHS going and to treat the rising number of cases. So we need health workers who are also parents to continue to go to work. And we need other critical workers with children to keep doing their jobs too, from police officers who are keeping us safe, to the supermarket delivery drivers, social care workers uh, who look after the elderly and who are so uh, vital. We'll, we'll be setting out more details shortly about who we need, whom we need in, in, in these groups. So we therefore need schools to make provision for the children of these key workers who would otherwise be forced to stay home. And they will also need to look after the most vulnerable children. This will mean that there will of course be far fewer children in the schools and that will help us to slow the spread of the disease and these measures are crucial to make sure that the, as I said, the critical parts of the economy keep functioning and public services keep functioning. So we're simultaneously asking nurseries and uh, private schools to do the same 
and we're providing financial support where it's needed. We're making provisions to supply meals and vouchers for children eligible for free school meals. And where some schools are already doing this, I want to make it clear that we will reimburse the cost. And of course, this does mean that exams will not take place as planned in May and June, though we will make sure that pupils get the qualifications they need and deserve for their academic career. <clears throat> now, I know that these steps will not be easy for parents or for teachers, and for many parents, this will be frustrating, and it will make it harder for them to go out uh, to work. And of course, that's one of the reasons uh, that we haven't wanted to, to go ahead. Uh, and that's why uh, we're now working on further measures to ensure that we support not just businesses but also individuals and their families to keep our economy going, as Rishi Sunet, the Chancellor, outlined yesterday. I also need to remind parents, uh, as we've already advised, that children should not be left with older grandparents or older relatives who may be particularly vulnerable in falling to some of the vulnerable groups. And I, I, want to, I know that's going to be difficult too. <clears throat> and I want to thank families for their sacrifice at this difficult time. And I want to thank the whole country for the efforts that people are making to comply uh, with these measures. I particularly want to thank teachers, head teachers, uh, all the support staff who keep schools going, uh, who are going to be able to make these exceptional arrangements work for the benefit of us all. By looking after the children of key workers, they will be a critical part of our fight back against coronavirus. And as I've said, we will take the right steps at the right time, guided by the science. We believe the steps we've already taken, uh, together with those I'm announcing today, are already slowing the spread of the disease. But we will not hesitate to go further and faster in the days and weeks ahead. And we will do whatever it takes so that we beat it together. And I'm now going to uh, pass it to, to Patrick to give an update from Sage's point of view. Thank you. Overriding consideration, as always, save lives, protect the most vulnerable people from this illness. The vast majority of people have a mild illness, but some have a very severe illness. The measures that were announced a couple of days ago we already know are taking effect in terms of behaviour, so we can see that already, that people have actually taken that very seriously and have made a difference, and that's really important to carry on with that. But the thing we must protect in order to achieve those aims of saving lives and protecting people is to make sure that the NHS intensive care capacity and the ventilator capacity is not breached. That's what we need to keep looking at, making sure we do not get to a position where that's breached. As this moves fast, and I alluded to this on Monday, more measures will be needed to make sure that happens. And right from the beginning, we said schools are one of the things you can do, but they're less important than some of the others that have been taken. But we now think we're at a stage where this extra bit is an important measure to make sure we stay under that critical protecting the NHS ICU ventilator capacity. So that's the reason are now saying that this should go ahead at this time. It's important to stress, and this is really critical, it's not because schools are dangerous places for children. They're not. Children have a very mild or asymptomatic version of this disease in many cases. So they are at the least at risk. It's also not a dangerous place for teachers. The reason for this is because of the effect it can have just to knock down further the transmission, the put some delay into the system, put some breaks into the system of the transmission of this disease to bring it down, to protect those people who might get the much more serious version and end up in intensive care or on a ventilator. So that's the reason. Now is the important time to do it. It's not instead of, and it can't supplement the other measures. The other measures are crucially important and we all have our part to play to make sure that we make, make those measures as effective as possible to try to drive this right down and make sure we stay below that critical threshold. Thank you. Thanks very much, Patrick.
Jenny, from your point of view? So I think nothing very much further to add to those points. Uh, exactly as Patrick has explained, this is not a change in scientific position which we've always taken forward. It is very much a practical response at a critical time, as both Prime Minister and Sir Patrick has, has indicated. But uh, very happy to answer any clinical yeah. questions that come through. Okay, 